Diddle it and um, British Showman podcast. Welcome. So today we are going to cover a question that Shane's been asked quite a lot recently. What is that, Shane? It's just about grip and basically, you know, in Strongman you have different types of grip strength that you need to get good at. And, you know, people, it's a common thing I get asked. It's something that I think is definitely... I, don't, I wouldn't say it's genetic grip, but I think it's definitely something to do with like you, your work and your upbringing and stuff like that and, and how you've kind of handled yourself throughout your life before Strongman. But you, you often find you get two types of people. They either come into Strongman and they can, they have amazing grip. They feel like they can hold on to anything, but they can't pick it up. Or you get the opposite end, which is people can pick stuff up, but it feels like it's coming out of the hand straight away. So I often get asked about um, grip strength and how's best to train it. Uh, not just for farmers, but for, uh, you know, your axle cleans. Some people want to, you know, get better at doing double overhand cleans to save a bit of time. And then you've also got, you know, things like Hercules holds, car holds, stuff like that, that crop up in comps. So obviously we've, we've got uh, under 80s next week, or is it this week? Oh, this weekend, a car hold. So, you know, big national comp um, but with, a, with a big grip event. So, Josh, how would you up for this under 80s comp using like uh, car hold as an example? What difference would you add into someone's training if they had that coming up in a comp? So something like something like car hold. It, well, it's a very relevant question actually because I've been training it even though I'm organising it. I only got the car deadlift frame last week. And like we only tested it the other day and messed around with it and stuff, and it's had different handles on it. So basically, I've just been training everybody um, that I coach like quite generically in terms of, and it knew it was going to be like a um, side handle, like neutral grip hold. So what I've been doing with a lot of people, I've been co- encouraging them to get uh, hold of trap bars, um, stuff like trap bars stuff like farmers holds if they can or freight frame holds even better if the if they can if you've got access to that um i like people doing it from an elevated pickup so they're not getting put off new really by a uh, fucking shit this is heavy by the pickup when it's not actually that taxing for the hands so what what i've got in my gym which have been a real big hit actually is I've got some uh, lockout stands bought off Mark Adoc. Um and they're just basically where you can put the trap put put the trap bar the, the really lightweight stand you can drag them onto the deadlift platform or wherever you're working. Uh, but then you can um basically put it at different heights that you can put the trap bar in. So you can work different pickup heights like 13 inch, 14 inch, 15 inch, etc. So basically you can just make the Say, for instance, you, you, you've done your heavy deadlifts or whatever and your back smoked and you don't want to do any posterior chain work, but you want to work your grip hard, then um, you can get the lockout stands out and do like um, do some like heavy holds where, um, where it feels so easy to pick up. Like the kind of scenario, Shane, where you, say you've done like a, you've done a deadlift session, say you've done five by five at 250, 260 or something like that. And then you're wanting to do like farmers the same session or the next day or whatever. And you might be thinking, fuck me, you go to your farmers, like 100 kilo feels pretty heavy or 110 feels pretty heavy. So then you might be dropping down to 70, 80 kilos to accommodate the, for the, for, for your, for your, for the pickup to make the pickup easier. But then you're not yep. getting that, that much of a grip stimulus. Do you know what I mean? So then you go to your farmers and you try and elevate the, elevate them up it's just a lot of fucking about in it um but do, doing stuff doing stuff like that um f- find really good um and for, for people who don't have access to like say say for instance they're at a commercial gym and they don't have like a runway or something like that uh, or people training at home and they have access to a trap bar they can do like um say marching on the spot for time i'm a massive fan of that um to transfer to the specific conditioning to build the farmers and stuff like that. But uh, going back to the, the question of the, the, the car deadlift hold, so what I would be doing is trying to get different uh, exp- cycling 
um, different trap bars if possible, or different handles, like slightly different handle whips, like, um, I don't know what size they are, one inch, two inch or whatever, but it can be fucking anything. It can be anything. So get, get comfortable. Think about, because obviously what you're saying there is very specific, isn't it? Um, to farmers. So, well, say, say at a card of the tour or a farmer's hold in a comp. Yeah. Or, 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 or farmer's walk. Let's just, you can, you can use anything for this. Hurt this or whatever. You've got a grip event in your comp. Um, and I often get people ask me, like, should I do some rolling thunder? Should I do some, um, you know, fat grip uh, hangs or, you know, all these different elements of grip strength that you can get if you get into like grip sport. Do you yeah. think they, do you think they have a good carryover to the specific event if you have access to them or are you best spending time doing something a little closer to the event? In my experience, like specificity is key. Like you can be like, say for instance, like someone like me, for instance, like who trains very specifically, like my farmers, I was explaining this to somebody the other day, right? I've got quite small hands, chubby fingers. Like someone told, someone told me a couple of years ago that I'll never be any good at grip. My grip will never be any good because my hands are too small. Blah, 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 blah. But I've chipped away and got re, like got competitive at say farmers on a standard farmers handle because at the end of the day, most of the grip that you're going to need in strongman is 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 for farmers really like my, my, my grip doesn't need to be good for axle because I can just mix grip and then bounce it and pop it pop it up and catch it I don't really need that grip um the roll the the rolling handle grip I've, do, I've done a comp, comp once with rolling handles and it's completely different so I think that needs training specifically on its own when it comes up and yeah. in the background like to cycle cycle it as one of the variations but I think the staple in 90% of people's programs need to be farmers um, and my point is like my grip strength isn't I'm not very good at grip like if I go and shake someone's hand and try and like my hand will get crushed it's, like, it, it's not particularly strong but like a farmer's for instance like I'm fairly decent I could hold what did I do recently 125 each hand for 57 seconds I've done like 150 each hand for 10 meters done 141 for 20 meters like it's reasonable for the level that I compete at to to um like it's a reasonable level I can move fast with 120 farmers yeah my grip's good enough now but go to like a rolling thunder um and then I'm like I'll be way I'll, I'll be about average standard like uh, go e even like double overhand, like say axle deadlift, like my grip for that isn't good. Don't get me wrong. If I, if I need to get good at it, I will do, but, and I do cycle those as like in the background when I'm doing grip training, but I do think where they do have a place doing like say the rolling hand, rolling thunder and fat grips and stuff like that. I think they're absolutely fantastic if you're, doing like an intense phase where you need to improve your grip for instance and you wanted to hit your um your grip with a lot of volume i think these are absolutely brilliant for you to keep training when uh, for the sake of your hand care like um yeah. find that if you do a lot of volume on uh, farmers you might soon get to the point where your your hands are fucked before it actually gets difficult if that makes sense uh, was I, I've said to you before, Shane, like I, I was at, like in my program then um, where we're doing like a simple linear progression on frame and it might get to week three and like my fucking, it doesn't even feel hard. The pickup feels easy, but my hands are fucked. And then instead of like just grimacing through the weight, I've put the fat grip handles on the frame, for instance, or the farmers. And then I've made it as challenging in terms of the same RPE or F or exertion level. Um, but obviously with a lot lighter weight because I'm using the fat grips, but because of the change in hand position, like my skin is completely pain free. Um, yeah. So I'm still getting that kind of neural stimulus where I'm trying to get that um, 
the flexion and closing my like hand closing strength, if you will. But you have a week doing that. The following week, you can come back to your your other stuff. Um, so, so I think it. I think the really good to, tools to keep you trading. Um, yeah. Well, I think we've well with most things to be fair, but I think the grip frequency has been the thing that I've noticed with clients that works the best. So, yeah. so like you say, you, I think for a short phase, you can do, like, for example, Flash is an example. He's coming up to Brits under 80. There's a frame carry and there's a car hold in, in, in the comp. So there's two events there that are similar-ish tests of, well, the frame's obviously moving, but it's similar grip position with the frame. So I've had him doing farmer's hold one day or frame hold and then frame on the other day. But I don't think you could keep that up for much longer than a specific comp peak because there's so much weight going through the body and the hands that eventually, like you say, your hands are going to get beat up uh, and you're going to struggle to progress both days forever. Whereas if you have um, a, a, a more longer term plan with your grip, you could do farmers once and have these less demanding things in, you know, during the week, um, like passive hangs, for example. It's just yeah. so sim so simple to do that you can just add them into a session at the end. Yeah. And it, it depends on your body weight, obviously. You might have to add a little bit of load or something. But if you're a heavy guy uh, or girl and you want you want to just hang from a bar, you might only be able to hang for 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. And that's that's quite a you know a, a neural stimulus for your hands then just from yeah. which they just hanging on a bar. Yeah, and it well, do, so it doesn't do take much away from you, does it, Josh? It doesn't take any back yeah. strength or traps or you know you're just just hanging. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, like passive hanging is absolutely brilliant for for building up like, for a number of reasons because um, the. In terms of technique, and you, which a lot of people don't talk about with grip, like in terms of technique, the hand positioning on a passive hand should be pretty much the same as uh, same as your farmers. Um, so you can just replicate that feeling and feeling of your hands and your finger strength uh, on the passive hand. Also, as well for a lot of us guys, where we're doing a lot of compression stuff, where we're doing fucking yoke, farmers, heavy deadlifts, some of us squat. Uh, you get we're getting loads of compressive volume to the spine so doing some uh, like passive hangs and stuff is just going to give you that little bit of little bit of traction a um, little bit of um, kind of separation of your vertebrae if you will a little bit of force yeah, going the think, other way around I think if you're going to add some in extra for, for grip then you can't go on the passive hang because like you say you get that that will those benefits and then you get your mobilization for your overhead yeah, position. Um, yeah. and and yeah i think you can't really go it's it's such such a bang for your book thing that you just get from literally walking over to pull a bar and hanging it's yeah. so simple that that's my first that's my first go to adding exercise for grip if i want someone to do more volume so i think so if we're giving some people some stuff to take away and apply it to themselves Make the if you can only train one day, you grip if that's yeah. all you've got. Specific work, so farmers, I would say, in my opinion, right? I have never seen someone who's really good at farmers, I've never seen him be shit at um Hercules hold, for example. You know, the handle is usually the same, uh, same, same kind of diameter, it's, it's usually very similar. And it's a, gr a grip event where you're holding for, for time. So you've got to squeeze for however long you can. I think that most people, if grip is the focus, should train the farmers slightly longer distance than what most people do. Um, so you get a bit more time under tension on the grip because a lot of guys are fast with it as well. If you, if you do 15 meters runs and that's it, you, you're going to be, it's over within less than 10 seconds. So doing your farmers over like 20 drop 20 or even better i really think that turns uh, well, well your grip improved quite a lot actually when you were training that turn didn't it yeah, your really, farmers it was mad 
Yeah, no, it, it's it, and and also as well, like what I did, I did like a bit of a shock approach with that. Was like it was it it was England last year, and it was what was it one twenty, and it was like fifteen meters there and back. And I thought, right, fucking hell, this is a banker event for me. I'm going to win this. And then they changed it to round a cone. So it changed from a speed event to a grip event of which yep. like I was wanky. I couldn't finish it. Like, so I just, I just thought, right, the only, the only way I'm going to get better at this is by doing it more. And I did about, I think the last four weeks up to England, I did comp weight maybe four times a week or three, at least three to four times a week. And I thought, at first, like my hands were getting a bit sore and I was thinking, oh God, I can't keep this up because my skin's just going to fall off. But even my skin, my skin just, my skin just imp- uh, got better uh, in terms of recovery. Like I could go heavy and then the next day my skin was fine. Um, I was forced to improve my positioning in my hands. For me, I talked a bit about this at our group session the other day. Um, for me, I've actually got better at farmers by letting the, the, um, the handle drop into like my finger crease rather than causing calluses. Like it, it's actually in the crease of my fingers now. And I feel really, really strong in that position. Um, well, I've had to copy that technique of yours as well, because my left hand, the only problem I have with it still is it doesn't fully close. So squeezing a thin handle feels like impossible because I just call like I can't close my hand basically and I never will be able to. It's just it just stops there. So if I drop it into the crease of the finger, like uh, what you said, I can I feel like I can squeeze harder. So it's taking some getting used to, but like for me it felt like um it felt like it was gonna fall out like after 10 meters. And I'd sometimes put it down when I first started, thinking I was gonna drop it. Yeah. But then I had never dropped, and then now I've progressed the way I kind of still feel that way but it just doesn't come out my hand so for me yeah. it's been a bit of a game changer as well because of that and I feel like I can and, and mate, I, bet, I bet it doesn't fucking hurt your hands as much no no well I was doing like 10 sets of farmers at yours and uh, you know usually after three or four sets I'd be like looking at my hand like Jesus Christ my skin but uh, yeah I could put in more volume so guys wondering what we're, what we're talking about here, right? So I, I see a lot of people doing farmers and then saying the fucking, oh, my, my hands, re- oh, I can't do much farmers because my, because it's brutal on your hands. Whereas I find people try and grip the farmers like they're actually like trying to crush the farmers with the hand. And then therefore the farmers will sit like in the, in your hand and like almost like contribute to the, the pressure on the calluses if you will and then therefore like you'll be risking tearing calluses and stuff whereas what what i do my technique that 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 i'm a big fan of is actually dropping the the um, farmer's handle into you into your finger so almost like between where your calluses are and the crease of your of your fingers in that crease and locking it in and almost yeah. like creating like a like a hook effect there that you're almost like balancing the farmers on the hook rather than squeezing with your hand. So like, um, yeah, it's counterintuitive. Like at first you think, fuck me, this feels comfortable on my hands, but I'm just going to drop it. My hand's just going to open. But you can get very strong at it very quick. And, um, and you don't feel like your forearms are pumped at the end of it or anything. It's just literally like your your finger strength the other advantage of doing it this way if you can get your head around it is um the the pickup height it just gives you an extra centimeter in terms of start position so your start position will feel better on the pickup um and then the other thing is that because it feels comfier because it's not putting pressure on your calluses you can 100% 100% you can accumulate so much more volume without getting that kind of discomfort feeling of your hands feeling like the tearing so even if you just use it as a tool for volume accumulation sub maximal I think everybody should give this way give this way a go if you're not already doing it um so say for instance if you were say do it training 120 kilos was uh, roughly your farmer's pb limit or whatever 
say, go and try the finger technique for with 80 kilos for five sets. And, uh, and you'll be able to, you'll be strong enough to do it. And you'll probably learn that, oh my God, this feels so much comfier than doing say five sets at 80 kilos, gripping it with your hand, feeling like your tallus, calluses are going to tear every rep. Um, so even if you just use it as like a volume accumulation tool where you can practice your footwork and, and develop your grip and then go to your, what feels stronger for you grip when you get to comp, then go for it. But, uh, but definitely give it a go. Yeah, so on your main day, stick to farmers longer distance, play with your grip, make sure you can find something you can accumulate good volume with because just remember this, guys, right? If you if your only grip exercise is farmers across the week and you go and do two runs, it's it's not enough. You need you need to get um, some decent distance in. If I like in my head when I program someone who is doing uh, farmers and it, they've got a grip weakness. I'm, I want to get between 150, 200 meters total distance carried over work sets minimum, um, which is basically like it's about five sets of 20 drop 20, uh, which is a lot more than what most people will do. They'll do like two, two or three sets, 20 meters, so 60 meters total work. So start with that. And then if you need, if you need more of a focus, add it in during the week and just basically go, I would say, to go on how much time you can spare. It, you know, passive hang being the first, most easiest bang for book one you can add in. And then um, a secondary farmer's session or farmer's hold session in the week would be good. Uh, and then apart from that, my, my, other, my other kind of go-to grip work that's easy to do, I don't know if you've ever tried this, Josh, is I got it off Sam Bollins, I think it was, absolutely ages ago, where you, you just do it behind, behind the back. Yeah, yeah, behind the back, thumbless holds. I've had some good success with people making, uh, like people starting it and just being shit at it, like needing, like I think I think since Sam Bollins is using like 180 kilos or something, and I remember I wrote for someone, oh, we'll start at like 120 or something, and they were like, yeah, I could hold it for about, five seconds Shane so we ended up you know most people start around the 80 to 100 kilo mark for a, for a man and you can ramp that quite quick to uh you know the three plates to 140 range and I've noticed that's had a, a, a carryover to the farmer's walk which is something that you've always got to bear in mind if you're adding grip work in is test it and retest it so if your farmers are around about this zone and you do six weeks of rolling thunder work and you double your rolling thunder max but then your farmers are the same don't waste any time doing rolling thunder because that's obviously not carrying over is it uh so behind the back thumbless hold you literally set it up in a rack so that you have to lock out about an inch to lift leave it off the ground uh, so lift off the pins so you don't want it to be heavy for your back and you just literally have the bar behind your back thumbless grip and you just pick it up and hold for like 30 seconds three to five sets and just try and progress the weight weekly i found that said a nice carry over to the, the the farmer's walk so that that's one that i would advise but like i say guys if you pick an exercise make sure that you're checking if it's carrying over to your sport because if it's not then you're just getting good at whatever the hell you're training and not any better at strongman yeah i think that's good and the the thing with the, the rationale behind this um, behind the back holds, I think what Sam Bollins uh, says, he's saying that because obviously he's done it for powerlifting, hasn't it? Where um, yeah, he did it for his deadlift grip. Yeah, yeah, de deadlift grip, which for me I feel is the the same should be the same technically in the position in your hands than than it should be uh, on on your farmers, which is kind of. What I think Sam Bolland says this, that it's not about how much you can squeeze it. Like a lot of it's actually finger strength, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's why you take the thumb over, isn't it? Because yeah, then so you're it's, isolating it's, them fingers. And exactly. like you know, it taught me about the, you know, when you were saying about the farmers drop it in your fingers, I have the behind the back hold in a very similar position. Exactly. So, so, so I, I suspect these guys that are going from, it's starting off at 80 kilos and getting up to three plates pretty soon. Like, yeah, you think, fuck me, yeah, we're getting new really a bit stronger. But I think a lot of that will actually be 
skill acquisition and actually getting used yeah. to, you know what, if I have this, instead of, I, I can't fucking squeeze with my hands here, I can't produce force in that bar by squeezing my hands, but I can create this really good position with my fingers where the, where the bar sits and it doesn't move. And then, yeah. then carry over, I can see the direct carry over to, to, to farmers with that, definitely. So yeah, yeah. Give, give, and give again, it's, the reason why I like that, as well as it being it working, is it doesn't take anything away from you because because you can pick, put it as a really high pickup out of a rack, and also you can do it in a commercial gym. You know what I mean? If you don't have the farmers, say during the week you don't have your farmers walks, you can still do this, uh, and that means that you can do your farmers on your events day if you've only got a strongman kit on a Saturday, or whatever. So to, to me, they're, uh, they're my favorite kind of, kind of go-tos. And I don't really, I, I don't know about you, Josh, but I don't personally see the carryover to farmers from doing fat grip work. Um, I, I can see it as a substitute uh, here and there to help you recover with your callus and stuff, but I, I wouldn't give someone yeah. only fat grip work, like, like fat grip hang, for example. I wouldn't give somebody a fat grip passive hang over a normal grip passive hang for farmers. If it was for oh, 100%, double 100%, over, 100%, 100%. Yeah, because if it was for axle double over and somebody asked me about that as well, like, how do I get my double over and axle better? And, um, and what you did know, you I, say? Why, why do you want to get that better? Well, well, basically, yeah, I was like, if, if it's for, um, if maybe like, you, say your grip's going on uh, 130 double over and axle, and, and you just want to get a 140 for whatever reason, then, yeah, I guess you can. But my answer is just mix grip it, to be honest, because I don't really think, if, you, if you're skilled at a mix grip clean, I don't think it slows you down too much, you know, you know to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, another note on the um, thing that might, that might trip people up is... Try and get some experience um, working on a rolling handle, um, a sm small one. Like I, I went before in a comp where I've done really, really well prepping for, did, did it work when I was training at Hicksies actually. I got the top, uh, top score on the Hercules there. Like, do you remember? I got like 60 seconds yeah, or something, like 20 or whatever. Like it, did, it, it, was de it was decent. I felt really confident that I could beat everyone at the gym anyway um and then i went to the comp and it was a rolling handle and i came like fucking like like really low down i lost lo loads of points on it and uh, just just yeah. felt as soon as soon as it soon as it started to move my hand just opened so i think um assuming that it's like a small rolling handle like i think it'd be worth people learning how to hook grip and actually build up the tolerance of the hook grip because I feel that 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 would be better if you have a small rolling handle. So just to buy it, that, that was actually one of the exact questions I got asked, which was I un, like he unracked or whatever you want to call it the Hercules hold, and then it just rolled out of his hands in like two seconds. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the one of the people asked about grip. That was one of them, and yeah, I think like you say, if if you're not trained on it you won't know how it feels because it feels completely different, doesn't it? When it completely mate. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I think the answer to that question really is to, like you say, rotate your, uh, your grip work so that you're ticking yeah. up all the boxes instead of and just the, using one implement and getting really good. The thing is with the fixed handle, right? You, you can get to the point where you fatigue and your hands, your fingers start to move, your hand starts to open but the the friction of the fixed handle, you can grind out, you can feel your fingers start to open, you can grind out another 10, 15, 20 seconds. Whereas on a on a rolling handle, as soon as there's a tiny bit of movement, you've gone. And it just it just it just goes. So with a <clears throat> I would hundred percent recommend um learning hook grip. I think there was a guy who messaged me the other day and he said that he un unwrapped it and it just it he, he, he couldn't even hold it and it was like a, a weight that he was confident with but he just couldn't hold it on the rolling handles so literally I think even if you're a pussy 
and you've, you, you, you can't tolerate the pain, I think you could, you could easily grind out five to 10 seconds with a hook grip even with your, your, your thumbs being in um, excruciating pain, you could grind out whatever weight for like, got quite high weight for a low amount of second, if you will. Um, and, and also as well, that it's worth a try because some, some people just really take to hook grip and I can't quite put my finger on it. I think it's maybe, pe- but um, maybe people who have got like long longer fingers or whatnot I'm, I'm not entirely sure but I've, I've coached some people who've gone to hook grip and I've said that oh it's going to be a bit uncomfortable or whatever and they've just really taken to it and they and they prefer it um, yeah yeah I think it's to do with uh, just the hand shape and size isn't it As well, for I've some, before, some people just do it and you're like hmm for some reason it's been um I've noticed women women have taken to it better than men. I don't know if that's just a random, I just don't know if that's a coincidence with the people that I, that I coach, but like say my mum, for instance, like she, she could, she could do like five sets of five, at like 115 deadlift hook grip and just be like, oh, I'm not, not ass, not using straps or just hook grip. Like it, it's weird. Whereas like I do the same weight and I'd be like, fucking hell, I can do it, but I'm having to, tolerate the pain kind of thing um but also there's you, if if you are if you have tried hook grip and you and you are finding it uncomfortable um there are just have a look at some people who were who are good at hook grip so some people like uh, who lift dinny stones for instance um pe- people who, who are good at teaching grip uh, clint darden's got a good video i think it's on elite fts and it's about hook grip position. Um, and it's about, instead of just squeezing your thumb, it's about moving your thumb in the same direction as the, like parallel to the bar before you grip it, yeah. it's less yeah. painful or whatever. There's other little things you can get, um, other little tips you can get. Someone said that, I think it, uh, this might be bullshit, but, or I might be making it up, but someone said about Tom Martin, like, files a little callus in his thumb or his finger so the like the where he's filed creates a bit bit of friction and that improves his hook grip or whatever makes his hook grip more reliable so basically there's loads of information out there um that can help you that people know a little bit more well a lot more about that than we do but I suppose if we can use this to steer people and just say, look, there's there's loads of little avenues that you can explore. Uh, but that, that's what I'd be doing. If I got like a, if I got a Hercules hold, for instance, and it is going to be a roll, potentially a rolling handle, that that's what I'd do. I'd um, I'd practice hook grip and I'd get improve my hook grip technique, I'd improve my pain tolerance, I'd, I'd build that up. Yeah, and you don't need a Hercules hold. You can just deadlift the barbell hook grip. And, you know, if 80 kilo hurts, try and get it to 180 without it bothering you. And then it doesn't matter what your hook grip then, you're going to have better pain pain tolerance to, to the movement. Because when I used to weight lift, I used to hate hook grip for probably three months. And then, you know, eventually you just kind of, just kind of, get I don't know, just pain just goes. It's weird. Um so it's definitely something you get better at quickly if you if you just train it. Yeah. And um and just got what final thing on like cycling grip variations. Like I, I've got a load of grip toys at my gym now that I just I'll I'll just throw in a bit of grip once a week and um, just cycling variations and um <clears throat> uh another what one that I found a, another benefit from was that the that isn't specific to farmers, but using using the wrist wrench, getting better at the wrist wrench. I've noticed like my the pickups on squeezing stones and sandbags uh, feel a lot stronger in that position. At like going like that with my my hands, if you will, I feel like my sque- squeezing strength creating from my my wrists and my hands is. Um, I can feel. I can feel. It feels very similar when I'm doing that and isolating it to 
to go into that. So I suppose, I suppose the overall summary is like all these like kind of grip toys and stuff are going to, are going to be quite fun, keep your training interesting, keep it varied and stuff, keep you from overuse injuries in terms of like, say, skin, um, being uncomfortable with your, your hands and stuff. But definitely, just like pretty much anything that we that we talk about, like specificity is key. Like you're, you're six weeks out from a comp and you're doing rolling thunder to improve your uh, uh, farmers, like, you're missing the boat. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but, but in your off season, like Josh says, just rotate them, throw them in now and again. Just just, just yeah. tell yourself on a session, like, this is what I said to my guys, just be like, if you want to improve your grip, like, a coach can program it for certain, but the best way to do it is just to, at the end of your session, you've got 15 minutes, you finish a bit shorter, you know, a bit sooner than before, you know, just look around your gym and see, right, what am I going to do now? I'm just going to finish with some grip. I'm just going to hit some grip and then just do something, track it, keep getting better at it. And even yeah. if it's rotated all the time, if you, if every week you're using your grip, whereas before you're not, you're going to get better grip. It's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty simple, really, in my, in my opinion. You've got to remember in Strongman as well, you're using it all the time anyway. Um, so, you or well, you should be, I always tell my guys as well as shit uh, grip to throw the straps away because, you know, they'll fucking, I'll tell them to do some dumbbell rows or lap pull downs to finish. You know, that's grip. But if you strap up yeah. to everything, then you've taken that, uh, you know, you've taken, I actually threw my straps away a long time ago because uh, I had to get them back when I started strongman again, didn't I? Because I remember I came to yours because I was shit at grip and I was shit at mixed grip deadlifts because I used to strap up to everything. So I chucked them away, started warming up my dead double overhand, um, you know, doing mixed grip deads, lap pull downs and stuff and curls without straps or whatever. And, you know, it all adds up anyway. Then you add these specific grip things on top of that. You know, we should have, we should be able to get strong grip really because, you know, you're doing it every session near enough. Yeah. Right. right done. Happy? Yeah, that's anyway. good. Cheers, Josh. Peace out. See you, man. Bye.